Blizzard do be experimenting, though. We'll start off today with some of the experimental changes. <laughs> After that, we're going to be taking a look at uh, some of the games to look forward to this weekend, as well as briefly covering some contend- content- con- contenders shenanigans. Words. I'm, I'm Vast, and this is Jane, and welcome to Contested. Hello, everyone. Once again, we are live from the Frontier Communication Studio here yes. in Dallas, Texas. I know you were waiting. You were waiting bated breath. Are they you, live? You reminded me who I was, and now you reminded me where I was. Where? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I, I always forget. You know, it's one of those things that occasionally, if I'm, I'm trying to concentrate too hard, you need that earbud in, just like breathe in, breathe out. You know, I've had heard, too many I, artificial sweeteners. I have. Wait it's just melted my brain. It's, it's just dribbling out all of my orifices. Uh, that's why you get some, good min, get some good minestrone. Minestrone? You know, bring it, reform yep. it. Some Reef- microwaved garlic bread. For people that weren't in the pre-show, these jokes are not going to land because yeah, they they're, weren't they're in the going to be about uh, as hot as a, as a good meal from Applebee's or nice. Olive Garden. Circled back, brought in again. Yeah, Easy. So getting them while they're down. I, I like that. Imagine not understanding pre-show jokes because you weren't part of the pre-show. I can't because I was here, and so was chat, at least most of chat. Take that, corporate chains. <laughs> Take that. <laughs> We've shown you now. You've learned the errors of your ways. Well... There's a lot of errors of ways that need to be discussed today. Oh, my God. Yeah, like, we were already, you know, normally in the pre-show, again, which you missed if you you weren't here for the pre-show. By nature, that is how that works. But we were already talking about it because we just could not wait to start molding. You know, we're not definitely not the only people, but the entire Overwatch community right now is kind of melting down. Everything's on fire. Reddit's on fire. Twitter's on fire. I'm sure other social media are on Australia fire. Australia is not on fire. Though. Not anymore. Not right now. No. Yeah, I mean, honestly, for there could it could be on fire for all yeah, I know. Yeah, you don't know. It could be. Yeah, it just hasn't reached the news cycle yet for me. <laughs> so it's very possible. But if you missed it, the main thing that everybody's angry about is the Moira changes. So the we we knew Jeff had let us know that there were two changes coming out to experimental. One change, which you know they said that a change was coming, and then they said that there was another one that was a failed change that they were going to release onto the experimental mode anyway. Now, the terrifying thing to most people is the fact that the release that they've put out today uh, is there's no indication that this is the failed one, but everybody's still super angry at it. And yeah, do you want to explain what it is? Well, first of all, (laughs) you launched into this topic really quickly because... We still have to do Pop It Off presented by Jack in the Box. Okay, can I just start being angry yet? Yeah, well, you can. You can be angry, okay. actually, based I'm off this Pop It Off. I'm going to be angry while you pop off. How about you pull off... How about you... <laughs> <laughs> How about you pull up the popping off clip and watch it while we do the popping off segment? You can be angry over the clip because True. I think it's a very infuriating clip, but it's I'm a very gonna, good I'm clip for be like your Obama's anger translator. So bring it up, Mike, because this is the popping off presented by Jack in the Box. And so we're going to be here on Rialto, or not Rialto, Havana first, actually. And it's going to be New York versus Chengdu in a game of the ages. And there's the audio by Jane. <laughs> Amon going to fall, find Jonak early off the follow-up. Their grab comes out from Lei Young. Amon going to find another and then swings through, finds Who Are You, while New York have been up all these mans. Going to find another, drops the solo mines. And with 50 HP, survives behind the cart. That is a classic, a classic popping off clip there as Amon on... The Hammond, the Wrecking Ball, making it work there on Havana. And I love that clip so much because it sort of, that was the map that they went to the map five where Chengdu then eventually turned it around. And I know that Leave was like the true MVP of that match. Leave kind of dominated. But that particular clip to me was just so legendary because <laughs> they were down, they were down man advantage. They had grab for New York. And somehow Amon just swings it around. That being just the rolling ball. around at the speed of sound. And you know, I've been and this, you know, swing it around town, as they say from my favorite spo- my favorite SpongeBob quote, and brings it back there and drops that solo mines on mono. So I really enjoyed that particular clip. It made me angry. No, did it make you angry? Yeah, it made me angry. So it started your mauled. Yeah, I mean, I, I was extra mauling. But now we can return back to the original mauled, which is the experimental changes, because we have to throw that one in there. We have to throw the, the popping off because it was a good clip, and you know, we had talked about restaurant trains we don't like, but I do love Jack in the Box. And the popping off presented by it. <laughs> Good so one. I had to let them know that one. 
Scripted zero to ten. Wow, tough crowd today. Tough crowd. Tough huh? crowd. Well, speaking of tough crowds. Speaking of tough crowds. The experimental changes that yeah, we were talking I mean, the about. Tough earlier. crowd being the entire Overwatch community. Yeah. I mean, there's some Blizzard apologists. Well, I mean, crowds also get really tough once you make them invincible. True. Which is what more of you fade shift them out of existence do. and yeah. cleanse anything that could possibly be bad about their current state of existence and just make it go poof and gone. So how shall we run down these changes, Shane? I mean, we have the pat. I have the patch notes open in front of me. Where? To even begin, I mean, like, the, the, first of all, we talked about it a little bit, but they're kind of like Genji broken bad, and they're just like Genji changes, control Z, undo. So there's that. But the big ones, and they didn't just make one change to Moira. Like, the, the change that everyone's kind of super angry about is the fade change. So not only is it you individually being able to fade, but now everybody around you also gets Well, it's not quite faded. a fade. It's like they get fade. It's like you become invincible for like a second and yeah. you sort of fade, but it's not like a true fade and it yeah. doesn't last as long. Yeah, you don't, you don't get like the, the movement benefit of it, but like the people close to you get fade. Yes, they become essentially bit. invincible. Yeah, for, and, and, and so all if, CC if you're like cleansed. pinned by a Reinhardt, for example, yeah. you are freed from the pin. And if, you do have to time it properly, right? Like yeah. for Sigma, what we see, I've seen a lot of clips already of like, I mean, you have to we, sort of time you have it to Sigma. time it properly, but at the same time, fade is a six second cooldown and you get a one second <laughs> more invincibility out of it. So if you ever just wanted to be invincible 18% of the time, all of the time, play it's Moira. Nice. It's nice stuff. And, but, you know, I, I love that they've in, they've made an AoE invisibility cloak. That's, <laughs> I love that one. And secondly, I also love that with bio, the, they've changed the orb as well. Everyone's favorite yeah, ability. Yeah, this is the other change they made, which is, it's insane. Because even this change alone would have people going, uh, no, maybe? How about don't do that? I mean, have you ever but been zero to one meters away and taken 150 damage per second zero from Zero one meters away from the orb itself. That can bounce around and come back. And the orb slows down more. They made yeah. it worse so the orb, if it comes within a meter of you it stays within a meter of you for longer while now doing three times the damage that it now you can get hit now you get hit punched from Ma 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 time to kill is a second yeah you like that one like that one ah! you like that one a lot i'm a big fan of it myself i'm a big fan of it i'm, I'm as big a fan about it as you are about regular season games mm, but you know i have to say that i have to say that this is impressive i mean <laughs> this is impressive there's no other way around it moira the, K, the technology shown here for the orb, it's like, this is literally like harnessing the power of a star in the right click and it chunks it at you and like the fusion annihilates you like yeah. as it travels and it bounces. It bounces too. Like it's not just a one pass thing. Like you don't just dodge it once and it's like a, it's not like a bullet hell, you know, like yeah. enter the gungeon or something where you just dodge the attack and you're like, okay, good. And it, goes it comes back again. Yep. It rebounds. It's air butt in you. <laughs> it's crazy. Like I, I can't, this is just, now, they also, they did adjust the fall off for it, so it does way less damage the further away you are, yeah, right? Th yeah, there's fall off. So certainly. it's not like just like some, it's not the most insane thing I've ever seen, but it isn't, it is definitely on the fringe what, of sanity. What is the most insane thing you've ever seen? The I mean, Omnic I, the Crisis? Fa the, the fade is pushing it. The fade, <laughs> the fade is, is pushing, pushing it, yeah. I'd say. I don't know, yeah, I think, you know, definitely the Omnic Crisis with the 80% damage reduction bastion was probably the most insane True. thing we've ever when you can survive hit. the diva bomb on top of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, as someone that personally played in that meta for a little bit, I was like, wow. My favorite part about that meta is like, you know, people are like, Blizzard will never push this live. And I just want to remind people that the Omnic Crisis was a thing that happened. And we're not talking about like the lore version of the Omnic Crisis. I'm crying. I'm so angry. Like, this is the really Omnic Crisis you. is the name of a meta, which oh. hilariously, I was talking to Bastion Main, the streamer about it, and he took a break. The ba the ba the Bastion one trick took a break and then Omnic Crisis happened and left before he returns. So, anyway, I, th I thought that was really funny. But so it oh, I thought there was a story. No, in there. it's just the, it's just that Bastion, Bastion one wasn't trick. playing it was, anymore. It was, Bastion was good for two weeks, and it was the one time that one of the main Bastion streamers wasn't playing the game. I thought for it was me, the wrong. Omnic Crisis was when Circuit City closed. That was the Omnic Crisis. Okay, for me. ignoring a vast for a second. Here. <laughs> But, like, how long did Omnic Crisis last? It lasted, like, 10 days. It was somewhere between, like, a week and two weeks. But the craziest thing is they had to hotfix it. Um, but they can't hotfix console. So, like, you know, the Omnic Crisis was so brief that some people don't even realize it happened. But console had to live with it for, like, on the scale of months. Just I mean, does anyone really care about resist? console, though? Console is the red-headed stepchild of, of video games. All right, when it comes well, to, like, PC rip your games. Twitter. <laughs> it does. <laughs> 
It's true. I mean, the thing, it, but the, that's the truth, right? Is I was like how Torb was like mega broken for a long time because it, it had a turret. <laughs> he had a turret. <laughs> yeah. So that like fix I mean, that. Like, there, there are some things like the actual, like, you know, there are some differences between console and PC in terms of balance numbers, specifically because auto aim yeah. is a little bit more. And also, this isn't a dig at console being bad. It's more the fact that you're already dead. That's how it's treated. Is coming for you. I learned very early on in my no, well, I mean, yeah, oh, you're oh, dead. I'm oh, gonna, what are you gonna do? Oh, you're gonna put your joysticks at me. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You do not I'm mess so with scared. console mafia. Vess is not smart. I'm so scared. They, they, they can't play fair. Oh. <laughs> like, they, I mean, like the the thing here is that it's not about, con but it's also not about the validity of console. It's literally just that's how Blizzard treats console. Yeah, is it what is, I'm saying. Absolutely. Like, it's not about console being bad. It's more of how Blizzard treats over console Overwatch. Yeah, and like the way that it's so neglected at times. Yes, and so far behind that. And it was the same way like that before with the other game. You know, it was uh, I used to play a game called Team Fortress Two, and it was even worse with Team Fortress Two <laughs> console. Uh, so it was. Uh, I know what the feelings of console being neglected. I know what yeah. it's like. I like this. I like some of the people trying to justify. Like Blizzard even experimenting with it, you know, like they're like, you know, read the name of the mode. It's the experimental mode, guys. It's not gonna hit live, but like But the Genji changes it, went live I and mean, Genji's pretty what strong. Part of your brain. Like obviously if it makes it to experimental mode, there this is probably not just like, you know, this is first of all like the first experimental mode we've touched in like a month, month and a half. It's been a while. It's I been think, a long I think while. We, so obviously, what was the I, can't I don't even know. Was. But obviously they've experimented with something other than just this Moira atrocity, right? We assume, or maybe it's just like, oh, we haven't experimented for a while. Like, you know, I expect there's gonna be also some Jeff filter. said that there was a failed yeah, experiment okay. too. And this isn't it. This isn't this, it. this isn't it. So it's not like the quality of our experiments are really high. This is like Edison trying to make a light bulb and you just like I don't know. What do you think is the like, failed experiment? Do you think it's like a resident evil? Getty. It's like that's a nemesis a type of medicine. thing, like some sort of genetic creature that's been made by Jeff Kaplan to play Overwatch. <laughs> like, what is the failed experimental mode? I, what I could it possibly be if it. this is the non failed I cannot one? wait to see what they consider a failed experiment. <laughs> It scares me. It it's keep, terrifying. It, I do not fear many things, but that that concept like, I try, it makes I me tremble. I try and stay away from design decisions or be like, yo, Blizzard should do this. You know, it's, it depends on their design philosophy and their paradigm as their approach to competitive play. And you have to take, you know, business and casual. There's no world in which these Moira changes make sense. None. Edison, wait. And like, I get it. This is like a monkey's claw. What is the, the monkey's paw thing with like monkey's the paw? paw. Monkey's, the monkey's paw. paw. I'm the guy who's been like, Moira is bad because no utility lol. And this is kind of like me getting what I asked for because technically they gave Moira utility. Well, see, here's the interesting thing. One, someone says that you can play as a shield as the failed experiment, so you can just be a shield. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first one, uh, which I like that. And two, the what's really actually been lost from all this <laughs> that people some people have hinted that some people picked up that i think is so interesting is that the cool thing about this is that this is the first like new cleanse ability ever is Mora being able to fade like we have no like we have no cleanse for cc's <laughs> or ananades or anything other than zarya bubbles right yeah uh, and then Mora is her own person so this is the first of utility that's been added and forever that you can cleanse your teammates. And I was looking at this uh, like before, after my eyes had finished r circling through my head like multiple times and they rested again like like Tom from Tom and Jerry and it's come back. Like I I realized like wow, this is actually like pretty interesting because it shows that they want to experiment with like some CC cleanse. But then they like packaged it in to like the death star of changes <laughs> where then it blows up the planet. And so the coolness of it has been lost by by the Armageddon. And so I, uh, that's the unfortunate part about the change is that it's really cool that we've added some way like they're clearly looking at ways to remove CC, but they package it up into the wizarding world of Harry Potter and invisibility cloaks. And, and then also they gave more of the ability to just shoot like actual stars at you that vaporize you instantaneously if you get too close. And then also Albert's in chat and Albert brought up an excellent point. What happens when Orissa's unbanned and you can halt Moira Orb? <laughs> I mean, technically, huh? technically, the orbs still only have a 200 max damage kit. But the point is, is like, what happens if a support gets caught in there? Like, are you going to have to lamp for Moira Orb? <laughs> are you going to have to lamp? You're going to have to drop a Baptiste cooldown? Yeah. Or, or also, are you going to be just playing Moira, and so you're just going to use your six second cooldown to avoid all damage? Because now you're going to have to. Now you can do that. Six, every six seconds. Every six seconds. It's, it's like, you know, especially when, you know, when you're adding things in, it's like, what is the counterplay to this? You know, what is... How do you? This is not You're a like, fake. Uh, if it's a Baptiste lamp, the other thing with immortality or invulnerability, it's like, right. you know, force it out 24 second cooldown. Like, you know, you can be mad as hell that the thing is basically an ultimate cooldown form, but 
Like, the just minor changes to Moira's ability fade, which is on six second cooldown, and a six second cooldown could be an ultimate. It's James is the ability to speak. He's ah! just so angry. <laughs> The last change in experimental that didn't go live was in March. Bob not being able to be slipped. So that was the last change that did not go live. It was in March with Bob not being able to be slept. March. 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 Rapid balance changes, by the way. March. Isn't that something we were promised about a year ago? It is. Rapid well, balance changes, yeah, by the way. Yeah, that's true. But we got comp open queue. Yeah, we did. Got that one. Huge. Think about that. Big we changes. got some songs yep. integrated. Mm -hmm. I don't. I haven't listened to the songs, Huge. but I will say that though my original point. I think it's cool that they're clearly wanting some sort of CC cleanse. I actually really like the idea of Fade potentially changing and doing BC, having extra utility like CC cleanse, so Mortar's not just a heal bot. I actually really but, like, like that. This is the level of design or. I, you know, you know, I try I, like the only the only justification I can possibly find in in the farthest crevice of my brain about how you could possibly justify this is that Blizzard's like dying, not fun. Dying's not fun. Dying, not fun. Not fun. Casual, not die. Have fun. Make casual, not die. But the thing is that you know who still die a lot is tanks. And we haven't really changed any ways for like, because everyone's constantly complaining about how tanks still have like the least fun experience on average in Overwatch, yeah. which is 100% true. And not just least fun, also very, you know, reducing the amount of impact. And even when they are having impact, it's because they picked the characters and pressed their cooldowns and they've got a ton of resources. It's not like they're having impact because they're playing the character skillfully. Which is 100% true. I feel like tanks are the least like, and that's why we're sort of in the double shield epidemic. Yeah. Is that, like, tanks need ways to live. And so it's very interesting to me as well that, like, they've all, in the experimental changes, they've, bu they've nerfed Genji again, but current, in Genji's current state, Genji doesn't have to care about Winston's fighting him anymore. Like, so you're, as soon as more, as soon as Orissa's unbanned, you're going to go back to playing Orissa. Um, so it's odd to me that this is our, and I, this is why I like that Moira can cleanse CC with this change because now tanks, if they get CC'd all the time, you have a way to save them almost. Like, yeah, but, like, but, well, but you can't, then. you can't he, package it with everything we were, else. We were angry very recently about Baptiste's regenerative healing where it's just like press shift to not only heal, but heal in an AOE around you, everyone, right? If you're going to have some sort of cleanse ability, there has to be some sort of skill that balances that out. Like, you know, fade through the person or like a targeted fade. No, or, you can or, definitely like, you know, change it to not be th this strong. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Like, 100 let's just say like, well it's like we've given moira a cleanse it's not like everybody's like cleanse is inherently a bad ability it's like they're good there is there is magic in the execution somewhere and we have not even gotten in the same zip code of what is an acceptable implementation of a cleanse ability yeah it's uh yeah i mean i don't know i don't know what to tell you like it's just not it's i had the we have a long-standing joke of the of the, you know the the crack bite being passed around, and this <laughs> I is. I thought the censors said you couldn't say that. I don't know. I honestly, once again, it's I like, mean, you asked the censors, and then, and then you kind of like didn't get a response. You're like, I'm gonna say I it mean, anyway. I better to ask for forgiveness and permission, in my is view. It, is it so, really? I think so. Unless it's something On a truly heinous. Show? Okay. I think it's something truly heinous. So I think it's okay. <laughs> so I will say that I'm optimistic about some of the direction. But I, the execution leaves something desired, and we'll have to. We'll be watching their. They'll be watching their progression with great interest. The council will be watching with great interest <laughs> what Jeff Kaplan and Scott Mercer dream up next in the in the in the Dream Lab in the Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory that they pour out. I'm just next. really happy that my job is more around making content about Overwatch and not actually playing it. So. That's all I could really say at this point. It do be like that. It do be like it that. It do be it like really that. Really do. Never have I been more happy with that decision. It's so. I, so. Once again, experimental changes, not guaranteed to go live. We do have to make, because there's a bunch of people being like, it's experimental, experimenting, true. But we always have to put in mind of everything else that has been gone live before and <laughs> yeah. what hasn't gone live. And it's just good to talk about it because we don't want them to get the wrong idea. I'd be like, well, we don't want Blizzard to see this and everyone to be like, yes. Like all the Blizzard forums are like, yes, <laughs> yes, give me more Blizzard. And then then it just rampages out of control. And then we get the Orisa with the, the planetary defense dome and the supercharger that injects you directly with steroids and stuff. Like we don't want to have that. We do have an important question from chat from Stainless OW. He says, uh, what do you think about the Moira changes? Mm. Uh, <laughs> this is what I love about stream about being live is that someone comes in 
<laughs> and they're just like, so well, have, have they talked about it yet? And like, we just finished like ranting, like there's sweat everywhere. Like we're over here wiping off. We're like breathing heavily. And like, it's like, so what do you, what do you have to say about this? And we've already, we've, we've expended all our energy to talk about it now. Well, you know, you, we've got a stainless had a question. I guess we're starting from scratch. Let's do the entire segment again. I think all of Moira's ability should be orbs. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's just orb based. <laughs> Everything is just an orb. You have healing orb, damage orb, but the right click's like another orb. How would that even work? How would that even work? Are you just like, do you become a basketball player and Moira just dribbling? Has to turn into an orb in order to fade? Or this is just, is just a series You're of just orbs. just wrecking ball. I mean, let me do. What's wrong with having more spheres in Overwatch? Just orbs just all the way down. <laughs> just everything is a series of orbs. Well, we're going to... I'll Our next meeting... Do we have anything else on our runner show today other than Moira? Or can we just... Like, we do, we do technically we have do? some other okay. things. Yeah, we do technically have some other things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, bad, bad changes. Bad, not bad, not good, but, not good in, but interesting But concepts. interesting. And look forward to failed changes. Yeah. It's like it's like how do you find truffles in 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 piles of poop, you know? That's how I feel about Not the something CC I coins. have direct experience with, but I'll take your word well, for it. Well, have you ever gone searching for truffles? I hear like, you use pigs for that. You do, and they have to, and sort of you train them because like you have to sort of you have to snuffle through the the poop a little bit to find the shrooms, hmm. and uh, and I they're see. very damp. And that's how I feel about the CC cleanse <laughs> it t- buried within this change. <laughs> so. That's what we call some good old uh, cuisine metaphor analogy. Well, you know you, what uh, is just as highly anticipated as finding truffles in the woods with your pig snuffling through poop? Yeah. Um, some of the upcoming APAC games. <sighs> yeah. 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 I think that's a perfect segue. Th- that's a pretty good segue, yeah. I'd say. I'll, I'll give you some points there. I'll give you some points. Uh, <laughs> the, the, some of the APAC games are very interesting. I mean, returning to our popping off, there's another Chengdu game. Yep. Uh, I'm excited to see Chengdu versus Dynasty. Oh, God. It, the the, the okay, okay. will How be legendary. You you're excited for that I'm game. excited. I'm excited. <laughs> oh I am God. because it could just be Chengdu going back to being bad again <laughs> after beating New York, which is a classic Chengdu move. Yeah. Like they just, they start running and then they dodge their shoelaces long enough from their untied shoes until eventually they step on it. Then they face plant immediately. <laughs> yes. And, or it could be so losing. And then soul fans just actually have a conniption. And, and, but the thing is, is that soul fans are always having conniption at, at all moments of every day. So it just makes me laugh. Yeah, I don't. I, as much as I love to be like, well, Chengdu, I'm not. You know, it's it's still Chengdu and Soul Dynasty. Like, flip a coin, which soul is going to show up? The good soul or the bad soul? And uh, I think one of the things that the the reasons that Chengdu actually got their win against the New York Excelsior, you know, it's like New York Excelsior. You hear the name and you just because of the name and they've been good for so long, you assume they're good, even though current iteration not so much. Like one of the reasons that Chengdu won was because they threw New York off their game. New York wanted to be aggressive, they wanted to be proactive, Amang's ball and the rest of it it just didn't work out New York fell apart. Um Seoul doesn't really have a game to throw off. I mean, but the thing is that just creates the chaos it's factor. It's going to be chaos. That's the Absolutely. chaos factor right there. But it's not going to be something that is as unfamiliar for Seoul to live in as it was for New York. True, but I'm still excited because I feel like all the other games, like for the most part, in terms of like when we look at the how equal in terms of the matchup might be, this is probably the most equal matchup of the weekend. <laughs> oh my, it's so depressing. Uh, which is disastrous, I'd say. In a bit. I mean, maybe New York Charge, but considering New York's previous performances, yeah, I, mean, I don't think Charge I, should I have I don't any think issues. Charge is going to have a problem. Yeah, I don't think Charge should have I, any You know, issues. this is one of those things where you, like you have some teams, and I think that like. Fuel was actually, in previous seasons, was a great example of this. You had teams that played both up and down to their opponents, where, you know, they, they're a team who kind of, like, never have an identity of their own. They're like Ditto or, you know, just a doppelganger. They're just kind of, like, you know, mirror what the opponent is doing. Uh, but if anything happens kind of broadly, they just, like, you know, fall apart. So, um, which... New York that, Charge. Really, yeah, yeah, so yeah, New, New charge, York. Yeah. New York, they'll be able to look better playing against Charge, because Charge is going to... Maybe, unless New York continues to crater. Unless they just continue, unless they just pull a, a you know, a, what was it, like an in Yeah, but there's no way that just Charge is really, like, Charge in New York, New York wanting to have this proactive, aggressive gameplay, and Charge being, like, a really well-disciplined team. The chances of a New York Charge game devolving into absolute monstrosity, chaos, incarnate is way lower chance than 
I mean, Hunter's soul. You say that, but we live in interesting times. And also, it's still, even if Charge, like, just totally dominate them, right? Let's say New York just get flat in, like, a pancake. Yeah, but, yeah, but I, I don't really I see... Still think, I still think that's an interesting result for me, at least, because for New York, they just shouldn't be getting flattened, like a pancake. Even by Charge? Yeah, even by Charge. I think, I don't... The talent on New York it does not make sense to get flat. To lose, sure. Yeah, talent not to get flat. But it's not like the problem with New York has ever been a lack of talent. And they're still just getting exactly, absolutely Exactly, but that's smashed. why it's an interesting point to continue to harp upon, is that the talent is there, and they've had good results before, and they're just lacking now entirely. Uh, so I do think that for I feel me, like our argument is a Venn diagram that doesn't touch. We're both right and cool. Hey, that's pretty cool. That's, that's it's cool. always nice to have to have very interesting, unique opinions. Here, we're going to move on to the rest of the games then. The NA games, because that's that's pretty much watch out for Chengdu. Uh, I'm interested to see what they do to I the mean, Dynasty. If you're, like, Maybe basically, if you're going to be back. drinking this weekend, look forward to the Hunters playing the that. Dynasty. If you're not going to be drinking, if you uh, look forward flask. to the New York versus the uh, the Charge game. Yeah. So, But for NA... Not like any of you guys watch the Impact <laughs> games anyway. That's fair. <laughs> That's fair. There are there are some there are some people that are very dedicated to that. But for Renee, the the one the game that interests me the most in terms of like I think it's going to be enjoyable to watch is Shock Mayhem because likely. Oh, I thought you were going to say the first one. On no, our I'm list. not going to say okay. the, the, we'll get there. I was like, second, where are you going with Shock this? Mayhem? Is the most interesting to me in Renee because yes, of the yes, fact yes. that I really want to see Tyo. how yeah Tayo. It, it's Tayo, right? Is that it, the pronunciation? No, I'm pretty is sure. It uh, because Te people say it's not Tayo. So I I'm mean, it's really, Tayo. no matter how you say it, chat's going to say you're wrong. True. So. I know there's a correct. I know there's a correct pronunciation though, and I don't like mispronunciation. Well, I would hope there's a correct pronunciation somewhere. 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 We but don't I'm know where. I'm sticking with Tayo. Tayo. So Tayo? either way, you say Tayo, I say Tayo. Okay. And then one of us is right. But I said Tayo before, and people said it was wrong. So you don't even remember which one I'm supposed to be saying. That guy. It's going to be exciting because we we'll likely might see some play yeah. with the Genji if they want to play Genji. And I'm personally really so. disappointed that we're not going to see more Super Genji. I do think that he uh, is yes. the best we're saving Genji that, for the that we've ever seen episode. in the league. We're saving that for the Super episode. We're going to have a Super Fruit Ninja. Yes. And it's going to be just us dressed up as Super. So I'm going to take like a solid four inches off my shin Do you think Tayo is a good Genji or a Super Genji? Well, he'll never have the impact of a Super Genji. No? It's never going to happen. No? Okay. Never going to happen. But... It's it's possible that he could be a very good Genji. I mean, he's so had what, good what are we for looking forward to about the mayhem? Because we're looking forward to like, are there any other really storylines or things to care about in terms of the shock? Like shock or shock, they're good. They're probably going to win this. I game. just want to see mayhem continue to have to continue to uh, try to play Genji because mayhem sort of that's their, a real high bar. Their, their biggest, the kind of their continue biggest phase plan try when they lost Genji. to Houston was Albert, they didn't are you play still Genji. here? <laughs> Albert, play Genji. <laughs> Play I mean, Yaki has looked fantastic on Genji when they when they. I also him. I'm also interested to see how the comps develop as well for this weekend because we talked about how these sort of these anti synergistic comps uh, for the on Tuesday's episode. I was pointed out how we played a lot of comps with Genji and Ash and stuff, which didn't make a lot of sense. But especially when there wasn't a lot to backline yeah, blade. Yes, with the, so I, I'm interested to see how the meta develops because yeah. now we're on the second week, right? Yep. So I really want to see if we want to go, if we're sticking towards that Lucio Moira style or if we're going back more towards like a Bap Zin or even sticking oh, to the Brigida. Oh, right. We do have to make, is it, no, it is our Thursday episode. It's, we have to make that prediction today. Yeah. Huh, I didn't put enough thought into that. I mean, we'll we don't have to make to like a pr prediction necessarily. Yeah, but that should be, do we have a mailbag question? That should we be haven't really decided upon one yet. Yeah, we should, we'll do that for mailbag. Okay. We're going to take that, store it into my brain. We'll come back to that at the end of the episode. Excellent. Second match that we're looking forward to this weekend is the Atlanta Reign, who now find themselves without Baby. Now, now the last weekend, they still already have played games without Baby Bay. In Remember the that I said without Baby, and I was like, <laughs> that just reminded me of the still meme. Not it's like, still not I'm wrong. Still not wrong. I'm Baby. And it's like, I'm Baby. Yeah, so they've been playing Edison Urser for their yeah. DPS lineup. Baby Bay's gone, so he's not coming back. So we're kind of in like the post-Baby Bay era. We don't really know how big of a deal that is yet. Not enough data points. But uh, their opponents, of course, going to be the Boston Uprising. So the interesting part of this matchup is not the Boston Uprising. It's not the Boston Uprising. It is not the Boston Uprising. I mean, Uprising. like, it's not the Boston Uprising's Overwatch play, really. It's it's kind of... The Boston Uprising were showing cracks that uh, if I were a part of an Overwatch League team as a staff member, I would have been like, hey, player who tweeted that thing, it makes us look bad, please take tweet down and stop being dumb. Didn't happen. Sometimes... Maybe that was like the path of least resistance, right? Because Maybe. if you choose to bottle it, then it explodes faster. Mm -hmm. Maybe. It's possible. But either way, I, I am not really caring about Boston Uprising's gameplay so much as the no. continued degradation of their mental state. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not too worried about Boston as a team right now in terms of what I'm keeping on my radar. They're flying below radar signals. You know, it's, it's, For me, it's about the Atlanta Rain and if they continue to gel. Yeah. Because Atlanta Rain, they came out, beat Valiant. Valiant didn't look that good. 
And they got a guy like counter stop, but that's fine. It was against a good team. They yeah. had a good showing. And it's more of does Rain face plant or do they continue to show some dominance here to prove that maybe they're gelling? Because also the other thing that's interesting for Rain that we haven't talked about a lot is that they're continuing with a consistent Hawk Gator tank line. Yes. No FRD, no Pokepo. Yep. Nothing there. So on top of the new DPS lineup that's pretty much being permanently run with no signs of sharp. I'm really just interested in Rain and seeing how they perform because I want to see the potential of Rain realized. Because I was really <laughs> big on Rain. And, and you were not season. alone in that. I was really big on Rain and everyone's memed me, but I, I feel like the talent is there. Yeah. And so and they had results at the end of last year, so I really want to see it translate to this year when they arguably have more talent. So let's expand this out a little bit further and not just look because even if Rain come out and utterly smash the Boston Uprising 3 0, okay. They're still in the same category as Shock playing Super Run Genji. Yes, it's, it's, it's like part. you know, no matter how good you look in this game, if you look like God's gift to esports, you're still a disappointment <laughs> compared to what people expected of you at the start of the season. So their next five games, they've got Boston. After that, they've got the Dallas Fuel, which people are still kind of in limbo. We don't really know how good the Dallas Fuel are. Paris Eternal, of course. They've been looking really good, and then their games after that, Vancouver Titans and Los Angeles Gladiators. So of the like the the five games for the Atlanta Rain that are coming up, which ones do they need to win to actually kind of say that, hey, I'm not actually a Pretty much every team that isn't Boston. Pretty much every team that isn't Boston. I mean, ideally, you must beat Boston, but yeah. that's just like a given. Like, it's pretty much, if you must win games that are not Boston and are not Valiant, I think, right now. Yes. Like, you have to be winning against teams that had some measure of success to prove that you were at least on the climb. And if they don't, then they're going back to being the mediocre team. That's disappointing to me. Um, I just like to keep my eyes on them because I don't want them. Because if they suddenly face plant, then I'm like, well, they're not going to live up to what I want. But okay. maybe there's some hope because they lost to Paris Eternal. Fine, whatever. But they beat Valiant. So as long as they don't lose to Boston, they beat it and they do a very domineering fashion. I'm excited to see how they continue to gel. So it's going to be some stuff. They're the East Coast version of Glads. Yeah. East Coast version. That's sure. actually pretty accurate. I think we sort of, I think we sort of I summarized that before many times when we compare Rain and Glads, but uh, I do think that it's that's how I feel about them, and I want to see them succeed. But that's the, those are our matches to sort of watch a bit. I'm I'm most interested in those. There are other interesting matchups, but I don't think this weekend is that exciting in terms no, of what. It's, it's a pretty low key weekend. Yeah, it's not a hugely it's, it's exciting the second weekend. weekend. You know, it's not the final one before the qualifiers. The uh, you know we'll talk about the meta itself. Like the hero pools haven't changed. It's the same thing with the Orisa and the Widowmaker being banned. So, yeah, it's a pretty low key weekend okay. in terms of the spectrum. It's still not quite regular season games. So not quite. But, there uh, is some stakes. Almost at the amount of stakes of regular <laughs> season games. Uh, we we can talk about the metal a little bit later, but there is another piece of news that came out today um, <laughs> that a certain that's a, and we can touch on a bit because I find it very. You had strong opinions about this before released, we even went live. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let changer. you go. I'm gonna get a drink and uh, you uh, mauled about these changes. Uh, let me bring them up exactly yeah, so have I can fun with this one. I Vast can reiterate them. <laughs> super happy about these changes. I let me you. let I'm me reiterate them in their words. Let's see. Take it away, Vast. I'm trying to find the. Let me find the. Uh, changes real quick so i can re reiterate them in their words where is it i can send it to you i had it up just a second ago literally it's just also a second in the, ago. it's in the ros i put in the ros yep is it in there yep e excellent excellent let me bring that up real quick so i'm surprised you can't just be angry about this from memory well i well i can remember <laughs> it but i want to i want to be able to bring out specifics because i have it i have it memorized but i also want to be able to remember some of the specific wording yeah okay so Chat, if you're not familiar, <laughs> Contenders has been experimenting a lot with changes. There's been some leaked articles about how they wanted to have like a duo system, how they wanted to make everyone do upside down handstands and play with their feet. You know, there's all sorts of crazy changes in the Contender system. Well, most recently, they released for their season two the format. And they also announced some new, pro some new talent as well. There's written broadcast. You know, it's got Trid and Necro, both people I like a lot, uh, especially Trid. He's my lad. Um, and they released how the brackets are going to work. <laughs> in North America and you Europe. Like, you like how these brackets work, don't you, Avast? So, the brackets <laughs> in Contenders, there is a lower bracket for the tournament system because they're now in a tournament format. Uh, that's sort of been the how they've been moving towards. It's less of a league format, more of a tournament for style format, or at least like integrating it is like sort of a hybrid system for a lot of the Contenders regions. And so they're going to have a lower bracket, but if you lose in the upper bracket... And fall to the lowest bracket, it you can never lower. you can never come back to win the tournament. You can never again ever compete in the upper bracket to go to the grand finals. You are just done. 
Imagine having a lower bracket that goes anywhere. Why do you have a lower bracket? Why? <laughs> Why? Like, wh oh, like, what the? It's like. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me? I, I don't I don't get I don't get it. If it's a cost cutting measure, just don't do lower just bracket. Just don't have the lower bracket. Just don't do a low, if it's if that's what it is, I don't know if that's what it is, but if that's what it is, just don't do lower bracket. Like there's no huge sums of money being placed. So like a lower bracket was like, okay, well the seating matters, but there's no giant sums of money being passed around. It's not the international. <laughs> and finally, what is like the, the entire tournament system is thrown on its head if you can never why it just there's no I, <laughs> <laughs> it's been a good day here. I, I, I'm, uh, <laughs> uh, 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 it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and that's and that's really the biggest thing about the contenders changes that we had to talk about was that because it was it, pretty much only that. It was so mind blowing to have a lower bracket and defeat the purpose of a lower bracket. If you're not going to be able to work your way back up to win the tournament, why have it at all? Why? What? For what reason? For what reason? It's just. It's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. <laughs> this is the more it changes. It's just, it's been punching me in the face repeatedly. It's just been hitting me. It's like Jeff Kaplan himself has come on out and, and, and just, just hit, just hit me over the head. He's taking out his club and he's just like smacking Coming out me about. Just kicking you in the nuts. It doesn't feel good. Rochambeau. It doesn't feel good. But that was really all I want to talk about for the contenders changes. It's like, why, why on this earth would you have a bracket, a lower bracket that you can't work your way out of? That's just seems, seems like a trap. <laughs> seems like a trap to me. It seems like a giant crab bucket, you know? It's like the crab bucket theory, and it's like you're walking, and it's like, ha-ha, and then the crabs drag you back down, and you can't escape. I know it's not the actual what the theory means. I know it's more of a socioeconomic thing, but the point is is that that's what it feels like, is that they were tricking us, like a trap door, where like you walk over it, and it says lower bracket, and it's like, oh, I can work my way up, and then it, you just fall in. And you fall into the crab bucket. Fall into the crab bucket. The crabs then eat you alive. Uh, so yeah, there's contenders. <laughs> there's contenders. Crabs eat you alive. That's a summary. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's all accurate. I had to really say on the topic. Sc scarily good analogy. Yeah, I don't have anything to add. There's not much to it. There's not much to add there. It's only been subtractions. Yes. Only been simple arithmetic back and forth. PIMDOS. It's been a good day here on Contested. It has. We've had uh, very reasonable takes on very reasonable subjects. Do we want to talk about meta, potentially? Do we? Yeah, we, we sort of hinted could. upon it before. Yeah, yeah. We can so the, just to just to refresh for people who didn't watch Tuesday's episode is where we talked about it last. We did. Yeah. So on Tuesday's but episode, we do have two. If you are not week, a super so. fan and don't watch every single piece of uh, content that Devast and I put out, then uh, you may not be aware of this. And also, shame on you if that's the case. Uh, true fans only, please. Anyway, so on Tuesday there was discussion that got prompted by a few other commentators uh, in the scene. I would say Jake was probably the main one who was discussing kind of the general weakness of the Lucio and the Moira comp, especially when combined with Genji and Ash. So the question that we were talking about in the previous episode and continuing into this week is we wanted to have more of a conversation of was the Lucio and the Moira composition combined with the Genji and the Ash just kind of like a jack of all trades composition. It's not really good at any one thing or probably probably uh, something that you can use a composition that just plays one play style and it's unbeatable at that or at least has to be mirrored but it was like it could be used multiple ways and nobody really had a feel on the meta or was it actually the best composition in the meta so to summarize this weekend do you think the lucio moira and then some sort of version with genji ash is going to return to see play this weekend or during this week of scrims was it determined that that was actually like people were saying a terrible composition and people have found something better for this weekend's gameplay. I'll tell you my answer. I think it was just meta inertia, as they say. Meta inertia! As they say, and I think teams were still figuring out what's the best. Uh, so I don't particularly... I think the, it's just too anti-synergistic, because it doesn't make a lot of sense. Like, you just replace the Arisa with a Rhine, and then a back line so you can rush. Yeah. And so it's very ooga booga, but with your same DPS picks, but there's no way to, like... There's not nearly as much way to synergize with them. Yeah. Because you don't have a halt... Uh, you're not having a window to and like pocketing potential for your ash. So and you can't really heal from far away because you can't play split heals because Moira can only heal a front line. You can mm -hmm. well not only a front line, Moira can only heal a group of people. And that's around her. She can't heal people that are far away. So I do think oh uh, you know, until she jones until she goes fully spherical and can yep. heal everyone with spheres at all points. Mm -hmm. Um and so I think it's just people not quite having the exact read on the meta they want. I think it's going to change a bit. I liked how, like, like this, for example, Valiant. They came out, got clapped by Valiant, by Rain. There was just cheek slapping all around. And then they came out and said, let's play Tracer Genji a lot more with Shaxx on Tracer. And it's not just because Shaxx is really good at Tracer, but because it just made more sense. 
synergistically. If you're going to play Lucio Moria, you might as well just play like a dive style where you go in. A, ru a more of a rush style. Yeah, more yeah. of a rush style is my feel. Yeah. While an Ash doesn't really fit itself yeah. to that. So my answer to this, similar to yours, but I do think that the Lucio and Moira is probably going to stay the same. And I think especially people are going to find more value around the, the Reinhardt and the Sigma. You know, I think that Halt itself was just such a massively powerful ability that, you know, there's still a lot of that kind of, the lack of the ability to adjust to the double shield was, uh, you know, double shield itself, the playstyle being very much based around Halt itself. So I think you'll probably see that more rush style composition with the Reinhardt, with the Sigma, Lucio and Moira, but Ash as a character probably doesn't fit. And also because APAC was so differently because they played like, they played a lot of Zarya, yes. even. They you played know, like There's been a lot of Zarya. Was it, uh, that it was, was Neptuno was or Nero who was actually talking about Neptuno it. talked about it on Reddit. Neptuno talked about it on Reddit. I don't know Reddit. why he's talking on Reddit, but he, he's there. So How, Who talks on Reddit? I know. But uh, the commentary was basically that uh, in the APAC region, especially in the ranked letter, a lot of people are actually finding that Zarya and Winston is yeah. being really powerful. So take that with a grain of salt. We've seen some Winston Sigma, even. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of interesting combinations that happen when Orisa's gone. Yeah, I mean, it's just Orisa's it, just so good that she's sort of And it's not the weirdest thing there. in the world. Like, previous metas, we've also seen things like Winston Reinhardt's and stuff like that. So uh, are we going to get to the point? You know, Winston Reinhardt was a very, very specific iteration on a very specific meta, so we probably I don't think it works anymore it. because of the fact that not even Genji's afraid of Winston anymore. So yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. I like, mean, like, the main part of the Winston bubble was to allow the Reinhardt to, to swing freely, right? It was like, bubble... Your, your yeah, Reinhardt, so and, he, and, and, yeah. and then you but also some you, you have that with Sigma stuff, now. Like that meta existed back before you could do that same sort mm -hmm. of thing, and you uh, could do more damage. And, you have and, more utility, you know, and that those kind of, we saw that kind of play gameplay come out when there were actually like multiple weeks, if not months, of preparation before the tournament. So you know there wasn't time for that to be counter comped, and there was time for it to be developed. Meta inertia was weaker. There wasn't. I'm trying to figure out a way to use anti synergistic, but uh, I'm blanking. So we'll leave that in your vocabulary instead of mine. But uh, you could say antithetical. Yep. What was your? You said a word earlier today that I didn't even know what it meant. Conniption. Conniption. What the heck does that mean? Conniption. Hold on a second. I'm going to look up the etymology. Conniption of that is word. essentially. How do you spell that? For all you redditor Joneses out there, conniption <laughs> is like when you downvote IRL. What? It's when you. How do you spell it? It's just it? when you're. It's just when you're unhappy. <laughs> pretty much, you're just having a fit. Spell it. It's like C O N I N P T I O N. P -T -I -O -N? Yeah, Conniption? that's uh, nope. Chat. I think that's. I think Is it's around it that. Two ends. Is it C O N N I P T I O N? An attack oh, of hysteria from is. 1833. Yeah. Origin uncertain. Yeah. Perhaps a fanciful formulation related to corruption. There we go. Which was used in the sense of anger from Guys, 1799 I or the English use, dialogue. I, I don't have to spell Knapsis. words anymore. I have a spell checker, okay? I don't have to spell words. I haven't spelled words since I was like in 10th grade. A fit of rage or hysterics. Yeah, I'm having a conniption right now over spelling. And you're using 18 words from the 18, early 1800s yes. on me. Ill-tempered. Cap capicious. Yeah, okay. Well, you learn something new every day, Chad. Yeah, Apparently have. my thing that I learned today was conniption. You have. But overall, metas... Oh, here it comes. <laughs> Are you going to do it? I thought, I thought you were really going for it. You were going to no, go. No, you were right, play? Right, oh, it's just really tease. loud. Okay, just a tease. I yeah. see. Uh, so yeah, that's. Yep, that's <laughs> we got derailed a bit, but overall meta stuff going to be more solidified. Yeah, going to lay the groundwork. And that is this week's uh, mailbag question as well. So before we get into answering our Tuesday question, you let us know what your prediction is for the meta this weekend. Because again, like we, it's the same hero pools as last week. There's already been some commentary about what people are thinking is going to be, but. Let us know what you think is going to be the most dominant meta this weekend, and why, please. Can we have this happy middle ground from people who are just like, the meta is going to be dive, and they say nothing else, no explanation, no. and then some people are going to be like, well, and then just like vomit a dictionary no. onto the page. We no. can't have a happy middle ground. Two extremes make we an average. We can't have reasonably sized takes. We have to people just be like, who's MVP? Carpe. I would also like or, to add on to a second. I want to add a second question onto the mailbag, by the way, because I feel like that does well for you, chat. You like to have your options open. Yeah. You know, you're exploring. You're not ready to settle down yet with just one question, and yep. that's fine. So we asked you about meta, but I also want to know how do you feel about the experimental changes with Moira? And should cleanse be a much more, should that be an ability that's being focused on in the future for Blizzard? Should Blizzard be focusing on getting cleanses out there for stuns, for ananades, and how exactly would you like them to be implemented? So you can answer about the meta, that we might see this weekend for Overwatch League. You could talk about the Mora changes and cleansing and things like that. Uh, or you can answer both. You can answer nothing at all. You can send me, uh, you know, a box of your bottled spit, whatever you desire. What? Whatever you want. 
All right. Whatever you want for that. Okay. Well, we've got a lot of time, so let's uh, do a couple more mailbag questions. Well, we still we have some answers. Yeah, we have some answers. Yeah, here. yeah that's what I was saying. Because I got there was a very large one on Reddit, and we got a few from YouTube, and I think you had a couple. I from always your have dis- them. You, yeah, of yeah. course. So, do you want to start us off? Oh, I can start, but I got to read this comment first from uh, Lose Yourself to Dance, which I like this Twitch name. Uh, Blizzard's going to introduce a sentient mop with the only cleanse ability for Overwatch 2. <laughs> oh, no. I like that. I like that. Uh, okay. So let's, let's get to our responses from our previous mailbag. In our previous mailbag, uh, it was a two-parter as well. Yep. We had, and our questions were, I know one of them was about, was the broadcast team too mean? Yep. That was and yours. the second part who was, was going to be improving first New yes, Yorker Spark. Yes, that's what it was. So from Discord, I will start with that guy who cooks in my Discord. I have a channel if you're part of it, and it's called the Contested Mailbag Channel. And that guy who cooks says this for number one. The casters are doing the best they possibly can with what they are given. There just isn't enough time in the broadcast to give detailed explanations on why a certain move rotation was suboptimal. It's much easier for a casual audience to digest a comparison between player A and B even though that isn't really fair because Overwatch isn't a pure FPS. Do yourself a favor and watch Overwatch the Superior Way. Broadcast on mute with a vast companion stream turned on all the way except for Flame, Flag. Did you pay for that? Uh, I did not. That actually was a rare good comment about me. A rare good comment generally, about it would have start, Generally, it would have been some other than making fun of my forehead or my hair. Uh, I never get any of those comments. Definitely. Then maybe not. I mean... You no, one, get, no one ever makes fun of my hair. <laughs> I appreciate the straight I'm face that, attempt. That's I'm a, holding back That's there. pretty the impressive part, there. <laughs> the second answer to the question from that guy who cooks was New York has the higher ceiling, but that doesn't mean anything when they have the coaching staff that likes to sprint before they could crawl. Spark will be the only team to rebound the rest of the season. New York are done. 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 There. Tip. Call it a steak. Out. Tap. It's done. Put a fork in it. Put a fork in it? Because it's done. You and you are American That's Indians. actually something ZP said a lot. Put so a I fork just, in it? Yeah, it was like a call that he would make. He's like, put a is fork he, in this. Is he his fork in his Diet Coke with aspartame? I mean, that's the most American thing On possible. His Delta Diet Airlines sodas flight? and grilled red meat? <laughs> <laughs> I cannot think of anything more American than that. That's K-Kona W. All right. That's K-Kona W. All right. There was a, there was a very... A pretty, that's a good a, resp- that was a good response, yeah, was a good actually, one. to the mailbag. Yeah, the guy who cooks. I think he was also in uh, chat as well. So Pro- follow probably probably at some point. I see him in the, my stream all the time. But he that was actually a good response. I felt it was something that I... I didn't articulate it very well when I started my spontaneous mauled <laughs> on the last, on the last uh, show. I just got caught up in the emotion. Yeah. And um, it's true that one of the big facets of broadcast is you have a scarcity of resources, and that resources are words and time. Yes. And so you have to communicate in the most effective manner possible about results. Yes, like, but counterpoint, right? You know, this, this comment has come up before that like, people were doing it for entertainment purposes, and then, then you kind of have the Overwatch League talent go and make like an hour-long podcast where they continue to just have bad takes where they could have had as much time in the world to make good takes instead. So I mean, also it's still the constant balance and active entertainment, right? Because yes. when we make our super episode and when I do pickle Ave, I mean, uh, that, that does is that hard hitting analysis. Does that have any, subst- is there any substantive <laughs> things in there? The answer is no, but we're going to make you laugh. So you always have to balance out that act, right? And obviously some members of broadcast are more experienced than others in terms of what they can make an exact call of what has gone wrong, right? Because the reality is for being a broadcaster, you have to, ba- you ideally want to know the game, but you're not going to necessarily always be a professional. Like there's yeah. only a few that had that sort of knowledge and it shouldn't be expected because that's kind of ridiculous. If you want everyone to be a professional, it's kind of hard to do that, especially since a lot of pros, if we're being honest, just don't have personalities to make that transition. <laughs> they don't, they're, yep. they're, they're dull as doorknobs. That's just, just, that's just life. It doesn't make them uninteresting people. It just makes them not good for broadcasts. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you do have to sort of try to create narratives in a way that people are going to find engaging while sort of giving the spice of the moment. I do agree. Constru- obviously, you definitely have people that can find a better balance, but it just rubs me the wrong way when people don't realize that like it is a, this constant balancing act all the time for a broadcaster to be like, I need to be funny and entertaining or else people are going to resonate sleep. And I need, to do, I need to present the game in a very accessible fashion because there are people that aren't that interested in pro experience that watch games still, but also hit on the heart of the matter and what happened and all these other things. So it's just a really, really hard balancing act. And everyone is an expert, but very few people are out there doing it. So, and there's a lot of reasons for that, but it's just the same thing with any competitive nature, right? It's like everyone's going to be an expert at what you do. People are going to say that we're bad. 
We are. And they wouldn't be wrong. They wouldn't be wrong. They wouldn't be wrong. Not in the slightest. But the, and the same with players, coaches, everything, you know, everyone, you, it's just how it is. But there's a lot of facets that go into it that are more than just cast or cast better. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the truth. It's just the truth. But good response. I also agree with the spark stuff because I'm a spark simp. Yep. Yes. I'm a spark yes, simp. Yes, you are. And so I agree with that guy who could that, that comment as well. That is the most true thing you've said today. Spark simp. In a long time, actually. So I actually, I agree with that comment as well. I think Spark has a much better chance of rebounding this season. It's already started to show it. Now, Jane, your turn. All right. So like Overwatch123 on Reddit, on the contested podcast subreddit, oh. had this to say. Number one, I don't know. <laughs> It's not the hey, only. I respect. I respect. Yeah, I, I it's respect not the that. only thing he said. Oh, <laughs> I'm not sure what is the right amount of negativity or memes you can do to make entertainment product like Overwatch League good. However, I feel like the NA side of casting APAC games, we could have a deeper analysis during the halftime break. Of course, this is very hard because you need an analyst desk doing the in-depth analysis during the game, and I assumed is a logic logistical problem from the NA side. But I feel this is still very important. APAC games have halftime break in-depth analysis that feels more constructive in the Korean Chinese Overwatch League challenge channel, but in the mainstream NA channel where casters also have to do the in-depth analysis are most likely to miss something important. This could help clear and make narratives better about the APAC teams instead of uh, some fans mauling about the APAC power rankings and teams a lot of the time. Then again, this is just my two cents. Take it as you will. Hmm. And did they have an answer to they did? the second part? For me, Spark. So, <sighs> yes. Yeah. Pagion added to the Spark as an assistant coach helps to give the coaching structure more stability in getting their results while New York Excelsior just adds new players and it still feels like the players and the coaches themselves are slower in fixing their team's problems and fund I mean slower implies progress at all honestly uh, slower in fixing their problems and fundamentals like how Jonak play Moira and Baptiste like season one Zen in certain critical situations or like how New York Excelsior can play the old punished defensive style when defending but to also do that when they are attacking doesn't really make much sense as time is limited when you are attacking and they bring in proactive players like Hotba, Haxel, and Mandu, but never able to utilize wow, their aggression. really in depth. Yeah, of course, this assumption could come back and bite me in a butt. In a butt. In a butt. In a butt. But till I but till I see more consistently good results over the span of three weeks, at least from these two teams, I still see them with growing pains, whereas Spark edges out New York Excelsior on this one. Hmm. Those are good responses. Honestly, good responses for Mailbag this week. Uh, Josh was badgering me to read his, but I won't. Imagine so, listening to Josh and Josh. Like Josh has to have good takes if he actually wants to have comments read it. on this. This. Uh, I mean, Josh actually. This is a good I'll takes only platform. I'll give him some credit. He does have some okay comments, so I'm just not going to read it because if I give into his demands, then he's just going to respond. It's like reinforcing negative behavior, right? You yeah. got to like when they when your kid's crying. Sometimes you have to have a little tough love, and then they'll Josh ends up like little kid who in school who wants to be special. You just got to knock him in line so he conforms and can be a good factory slave when yeah. he graduates. Yeah, you just got to crush his dreams. True, true. Got it's an important part of America. Got to flatten him into a pancake. Overall, though, I agreed with both those comments for the most part. The also ones, the ones you know, about Josh into the mailbag. <laughs> the, the mailbag and Josh. Well, I made the comments about Josh. And second, you know, I'm going to add on, though, to the casual thing because it's near and dear to my heart as well as someone that chose not to join the broadcast this year because I wanted to come work with this man and that man over there. I still have no idea why you made that decision. <sighs> well, we all, we all regret <laughs> We things. all make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and as someone that's casted before, it's something also that I get misinterpreted a lot with broadcasts is like casters didn't show this one cooldown happening, thus they don't understand the game. And it's like, well, sometimes you have to focus on the bigger picture. Like, yeah. sure, like this cooldown happens, but you only have so much time to talk about every little thing that happens. Yeah. It's not a VOD review. You're casting the game. Yeah. Like and, there's and stuff like, happening. The other thing too is that like there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of different frameworks that you could use in order to describe an Overwatch game or like what's important yes. in Overwatch. And like, you know, sometimes you pick frameworks that don't include every little tiny thing that matters. You know, and, and a part of like casting itself is storytelling, that you want to make things um, you know, comprehensible. To even mm -hmm. the most casual of viewers. So, you know, if you have to romanticize things or smudge the truth a little bit in areas to make kind of the narrative that you're trying to tell make sense, you know, I get that sort Sometimes of Sometimes you got it. And yeah. also, I said I'd approach it with open mind. And I've actually had, I had like Hex shows on to my stream sometimes. And Hex has said like the whole like graphics that cause it up are like the super bad graphics, you Debbie, know, that, that everyone hated. So funny. He himself has pretty much said, we're not doing those ever again. We got too much yeah. backlash. Like there, there, are con there are sometimes creative decisions that are bad. Mm -hmm. It's like the in and out. With with Valiant, when they took agilities and said that he was cut if he didn't perform better that, in front of a burger I, place. I had forgotten that. That was a creative was... decision. 
And it yeah. was bad. It was a bad creative decision. If somebody also made that decision. Somebody else looked at the decision and said, hmm, that seems like a good yeah. idea. It's like the Moira changes. That was a creative decision. Yeah, that also went through multiple pairs of hands. Now it is experimental, so technically it's not on live. Yep. But, but it's not sometimes failed experimental. You just make, sometimes you just make some mistakes and uh, you don't exactly get it perfect and it happens, you know? And I and I understand that. I understand people's players do have, you know, there's not a lot of scrutiny. If you're Albert a has figure. a comment in chat that I actually don't agree with. And he says, a coach live casting a match would probably be less entertaining. I agree with that. You agree with that? It depends on the coach. Because on average, if I wouldn't say coaches are that entertaining. On average, yes. Because at the end of the day, if someone wants to tune it, the max amount of people will tune in something that's entertaining first, mm -hmm. informative later. That's just reality. Yeah, but there are a lot of uh, people who do, you know, some of the reasons that people watch the Overwatch League is to learn from it. You use it in their own gameplay or see what the best are doing. So... Having no, there are people that do that, right? But the reality is there will always be a f small, far, far, like a very fraction amount, fractional amount of how many people will watch something that's considered more entertainment oriented. 100%. That's just how everything is. Yeah. Everyone complains like all sorts of shows are like, this isn't very interesting to me. It's not yeah. very informative. I don't, I mean, like, like, you know, that's just you know, life. If, if you're saying from the fact that if like a, a trained coach versus a trained caster, which means like, you know, by nature, a trained entertainer. Yes, like the trained entertainer is going to be more entertaining. But I do think that there are ways of like, actually... If the coach was able to be entertaining while being informative, right, then mm -hmm. for sure that would get some traction. Mm -hmm. But you, I'm just saying and on I, average I don't think the case. None of the casting pairs really do hit like full... You know, Jake is probably the closest we have to it. Yeah. And Jake, though, they still have a lot of moderating influences, right? Because I consider Jake to be like... He's not that he has no personality. It's that his role in the broadcast is to be Mr. Roboto. And he's there to like balance out ZP, who's and ZP is super flexible. So yeah, like, he is. He's there to like sort of like soften all the edges of Jake of the IBM Watson machine <laughs> and like take the digital output and convert it into analog for your eyes and ears, so you can listen to it and it's a much more entertaining. And that's like how dynamics work, right? So if you just got the Mister Roboto, it's a lot harder to reach a wider audience. Yeah. So that's how I feel about broadcast in general: is that I, you want to have that yin and yang, mm -hmm. but. If you just go one way or the other, like there's always going to be one people that so people are like, I want more information. And there's always going to be people who's like, I want more entertainment. It's the constant balancing act, you yeah. know, like, what am I? Am I, am I, a, am I a gymnast? Am I doing a, a balancing beam of sorts? Yes. The answer is yes. And I will, I do, I will not get a, a bronze and, and, medal. And, and I best. think that's actually really cool that the Overwatch League is starting to do co-streams where, you know, like they had during the Dallas Fuel and the Houston Outlaws game, like I did the co-stream on the Dallas Fuel channel and then it was raucous. Who are the other two? Uh, I can't even remember the other two guys from the Houston Outlaw stream, but like, you know, we can have that sort of thing where the the main Overwatch League broadcast is kind of like that general, casual, lowest common denominator entertainment. Mm. And then you can have people who are kind of more of like analysts or hype men or coaches or players providing commentary. So hopefully we do with kind of the co-streaming way that Overwatch League is actually starting to roll out, have more of those diversity in kind of types yeah. of cast. More content's always good. More content's always good. And also, chat, I know you're bringing up the, the Rap God comments. If you listen to Jake Rap God every time, I don't care if you're memeing and be like, I would love that. No, you wouldn't. Eventually, you get old. Yeah. It would. You can't, too much of everything is bad. It's just, the reality is, is that, and there's always going to be people, you could, you could have the best cast in the world. There's always going to be like three people that don't like them. Yeah. That's just true. 100%. There, that's just true. Yep. That's just true. So, when it comes to broadcast, we always need to maintain moderation, is my view on it. And that it that goes to both the broadcasters themselves in terms of their constructiveness and their negativity, but it also goes towards viewers to realize that there's always going to be someone that doesn't like someone. There's always factors to be balanced there. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that, like, if it was, if you guys are so good, why don't you do it? You know? But, like, obviously that's a kind of a logical fallacy, but the point still stands, right? Mm -hmm. The point still stands. It's a lot harder than it looks. It's a lot harder than it looks. What anything else for us to mold about? No, we're actually out of time here. So we? we're done. We already did our mailbag question. We read some of the answers. Wow. But uh, yeah, so speaking of the co-stream, though, I wasn't planning on advertising this, but since it came up organically, I'm co-streaming the, the Dallas Fuel Boston game on Saturday. So if you're interested in uh, more of that coach-type personality, I guess, doing commentary, Dallas He's Fuel there. YouTube channel on Saturday. If you want to watch any of the other games, just not the Apex ones, that man right there. That's true. Yeah, that's true. I'm always there. I'm like chained. Yeah, and like a in a, in a, in a box. I can't get out. I show up, and everyone's like, oh, "I feel back. like whenever you just get like tired of co-streaming, you just like kick your router underneath the, the table and be like, oh, internet's, <laughs> uh, internet's gone. Six I beers wish that was the case. Six I wish that was the case. I am tired of my of my my infrastructure is like <laughs> it's the, the my power is done by a, a third grade science experiment with a potato and copper wire, and my internet is like singular bits 
thrown by a, like a like a baseball like pitcher. <laughs> It'd be faster to world. just like FedEx you USB sticks. I, I don't know bandwidth. why this is. My infrastructure is so terrible, but it's just it's just life. It's just how it is. <laughs> well, yeah, Solomon's uh, coming for your job. Yeah, he's he's coming for he's it. Coming. He's coming. He's he's still in the crate right now, the tech crate. But eventually he'll he'll find his way out of there. Eventually he's just gonna like feed wires into yeah. yours, and he's just gonna have robot of ass. But it all just Solomon's just gonna be the puppet master. Who well, is who? Someone <laughs> asked who is who. Well, who's who, Jane? Um. Give me a moment to remember that while I thank everybody who watched this uh, live on YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. And if you are watching this pre-recorded on something like uh, Apple Podcasts or Spotify, well, hello to you. I hope you had a fantastic day. Um, but unfortunately, I guess you wouldn't have listened to the pre-show in the case. So no, no you wouldn't. Our have. next show is going to be next Tuesday, 5 p.m. Central. As per always, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I am Jane, and this is a vast. Nice. And that has been contested.